Then I'm, I'm going live here. He is all going. Let me see. I'll just bring up my page so I can see who's in the room here. Oh, where are we? All right. G'day, how you going? Ian Annapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to me video. This is going to be a live video tutorial, how to paint a African scene. I've always wanted to do one of these and I just want to do a sound check after the ads have played. So I've got to wait for the ads to finish. Okay, and we'll just see how we got the sound check. Okay, and we'll just see how we got the sound check. Beautiful, good sound check. All right, so we're going to do an African scene. Let's make sure I don't tread on me, um, my cable there. I want to grab a brush. Now, a lot of people that's regular on my channel here, I love using this to put the paint on and get things going. I've got a horizon line just under halfway, and we're going to have that African colored sky and a typical, you know, those big umbrella type trees that the elephants and giraffes are always uh, camp camping around under and eating from and stuff like that. So while you're over there, who we got here? There's 17 people in there already. Low, Keys, Ya, and Iziba. Oh, a lot of different names there today. I don't usually paint this time of the day, but oh, he had a hard time last night, didn't he? It's um, Sunday afternoon here, my time in Perth, Western Australia, which is about 2.30 in the afternoon. I'm gonna get some Retarda in that craft paint, Easy Flow student craft poster paint. I will bring you over here. Now this canvas that I'm using, it's loose at the moment, but when, when and if this painting gets sold, it gets stuck to one of my canvas panels and it will be sold as a canvas panel, okay? This painting, and it's 30 centimeters by 42 centimeters. And what have we got there? 12 inches by 16.5 inches, okay? That's the size of the canvas. And once I finish filming this, I will list the colors in the description below. And there's about 10 links in the description below as well. Uh, while we're there, I just want to get the, um, where are we? Did I put them there? Um, no, I didn't. So bear with me a moment. I've just got to put the um, links in the description below. So people watching can go and acknowledge those links there. Ding a ding a ding. There we go. Put them in there. I was supposed to do this in the beginning. All right. So just bear with me a moment. It won't take two seconds, and then we'll get straight into this live tutorial. I usually like to take about an hour to get these done. I don't like to go too far over that. I want to keep people interested in learning how to paint if I can. So that's what it's all about. Now, where are we? So I'll just bring up the feed again so I can see what people are saying if there is something I need to answer while I'm going along there. Yeah, they're all there. There's a lot of links there. Check out the links. All right. I am hungry, hangry from hangry. Hello, sir, says Deb Hilton. G'day, Deb Hilton, how are you? All right, so I'll bring you over here and we'll get the sky going. Rightio. Let me get everything out the way here. Hang on. All right, so I've got my craft paint, my student craft paint here, and I'm mixing it with the retarder. Now, those people who don't know what retarder is, it's that oily looking stuff, but it's not oil, it's a retarder. That's what it's called, slow drying medium, and it slows down the drying time of your acrylic paints. Okay, so I'm just loading up my brush. And as you can see on my canvas here, there's me line there for the horizon. So we want to get this sky all conditioned up with this white retarded paint. So we'll crisscross that onto the two for my canvas here. I'm using a canvas cloth. So we'll just get that all crisscrossed in to the area, the footprint that I want. Now it looks quite blobby and brush stroked and whatever. Just be a gentleman and brush stroke them out nice and even like that. Okay. There we go. Beautiful. Now that is conditioned. It's like the oil artists, if you've ever seen them, they can use a magic white. We've got that on there, okay. Laura Lou, g'day Laura Lou, how are you? Now I'm just going to wipe that off the brush. I don't have to wash it. 
I'm gonna wipe it. And now I'm, I'm trying to work out what Afrini colors, African, Africana colors we can go for. So I'm gonna go for my brilliant Indian yellow, which I bloody love, I love that color. And we'll, we'll have some titanium white over here. Good morning, Ian. Good morning, Laura. Oh, that's not titanium white. That's burnt umber, you dag. All right, I'll get some titanium white in a minute. We've got some yellow oxide here. And we've got some quinacridone magenta as well, just to give that other African colors going there. Now, let me see if I can find my white. Here it is over here on my board. I'll just grab that and I'll grab a bit of titanium white as well. There we go. Now I want the Indian yellow and I want to get it. I don't want it too yellow. So I'm going to put some of the yellow oxide in it. Okay, there we go. And this is going to be the first grab of that color because then I'm going to add a little bit of, um, uh, what do you call it? Quinacridone magenta in that. So I don't want it too bright and yellowy if you know what I mean. We want it that afternoon time of the day, that cup of tea time of the day where you whack the kettle on, it's that time of the day. And we're gonna go from the bottom here, don't muck around, get it on, crisscross it up in smiley faces like that, get it up into the sky there like that. And the bottom half is nice sunset yellow and then stroke it. So you've got a beautiful gradient there of the two colors and that's what that white paint with the retarder has allowed that to do. Now. Without washing the brush, I'm gonna come down here and pick up a tidbit of quinacridone magenta. See there, just a little bit. Just the amount you give somebody when you're splitting up and you're giving all your stuff back. You don't give them too much, just that little bit. Okay, and we're going to grab some of this and we'll get up into the red orangey part of the sky there. Keep mixing it till you're happy with it. I'm getting a little bit happy with that. There we go. That's it, not too much. Now I hope this is gonna work. I'm pretty sure it should get something out of it. Get some scoopity bits in there, scooping down into that sky, and then some bit more, some on the edge, and some up here, okay? Now, wipe that brush. See how easy we was? We just scoop that in there, but we're sort of on top and obligating inside it a little bit. See there, on top and coming in a bit. All right, wipe your brush. Wipe it like a gentleman, eh? Then from here, we're gonna, look at that. Oh, wow, there we go, look at that sky. Bit of beautifulness there, beauty nuke. Now we're gonna grab some of the um, actually, I don't want the burnt umber. I want this quinacridone magenta up there in the sky. I'll just see if we can get away of using the quinacridone magenta. Get some of that obligating down into that color there like we did with the one below it. Get that in there. Get it right up there because we're going to make a, a bit of a other color up the top of that. Now wipe that like a gentleman as well. This is the sort of painting you can do in a suit because you're doing everything like a bloody gentleman. All right, now we're going to gradiently swipe that across just like so. Hopefully this is some type of uh, African sky theme. We, I'm pretty sure it will be. I'm sure it will be. And we'll probably put the tidbit, just a tidbit of ultramarine blue what do we got french ultramarine blue just a tidbit so i'm gonna get some of that onto my palette down there i just want a little bit now hopefully this will do something up there not too much just in the top get a bit more in it wasn't enough you dream and thinking you're going to get that much done yeah just to get that the scary nighttime part of the sky peeking into the horizon there it's not too much, it's just subtle, but it's there. I'm wiping it on, French ultramarine blue. 
and then just swipe that backwards and forwards as well. Now this looks quite nice in real life. I don't know how my lights are picking it up. It does look a bit weird on the monitor there, but that's all right. All the way down there. Done. We've done that bit. Bear with me a moment while I go and give my... I've got people out there. I won't show them. I'll just go and give this brush a wash and a severe flogging. So bear with me while I wash this out. It won't take a minute. I've got a beater bucket down there with a broomstick across the bottom of it. And um, just something you can give it a good severe flogging with, okay? Give it a bit of a wipe on a towel there. There we go. And back into the painting. Now, what do you want? What do you want? We want some clouds. I want a bit of um, raw sienna dark. Come down here. We'll grab a bit of raw sienna dark. And uh, we've got white and we've got burn umber. Now we want the clouds. So I've got a um, fan brush here. Okay. So we want some raw sienna dark. Let's add a little bit of white in there. Come on. Don't be scared. A little bit of white in there. There we go. Not too much. And we want to get some sweeping bottom clouds within this sunsetty sky, okay? So we want something about here, cracking up there and sort of coming from this bright area down there a bit and coming over. And it's sort of like your arm and your hand reaching out going, see you later, mate. Goodbye, you're off. That's what this cloud's doing. It's there. Now I'm going to grab a blending brush. I'll grab your blending brush and let's get this blended into that yellow, that retarded wet white paint underneath all these sky colours is allowing this to happen. Okay, we're getting some beautiful sweeping goodbye see you later clouds up in the sky there. Just something down on the horizon. Look at that. Wipe your brush, probably pick up some more of that paint. Probably can put a bit over here. Something oh, there, that'll do. Let's come over there a bit. And we'll give this a bit of a how do you duty blend as well. Tickle the tops of that, give it turmoil. Come off the side of the painting there. Wipe your brush. Now we're going to grab another fan brush, which I've got here, just a cleaner one. Pick up some of that white, just to add some yumminess and bullshit into those clouds you just put on. Watch what this does. This is going to add that bullshit effect just there. Watch this. You're blending it into that brown colour you put there and it's just putting the lights on a bit. There we go. Maybe a little bit over here. Something within there, there. Not too much. Get that linear, that'll do. Twist it all around. Fine tune your clouds, practice clouds. Clouds are fun to do. I'm just looking in the monitor. I can see a little bit missing here. I just need something there. Ah, oh, there we go. There you go. Come over here, get on the camera. So you just put things on, move them, make the clouds move it and see what's happening on your canvas. Get involved with it and look at it and control it. Oh, up there, there you go, look at that, too easy. Now we'll get some kind of darker ones coming up the top there. So I've got some of the burnt umber. So I might just leave that fan brush a bit yucky pooey. And we'll get some dark ones up the top because the sun's behind them now. The sun's sort of sat down behind. We might get something here. I don't know if this is gonna, we'll go like that. 
I don't know if I put one, two, or just not many at all. Twist it, you, you, like I normally do my white clouds, but these are all different colors. Different colors there. Give it a bum somewhere. Just soft, you don't want it bright and heavy and dark within there. Get this bit a bit, there we go. And now you want to grab the white. So I'm going to wash that fan brush I had the white on before. Dab it dry. Pick up some more white. And we'll give that burn umber cloud a bit of yumminess. There we go. And do the same to that. We can blend that somewhere. Oh yeah, look at that. And do the same turmoil. See, that brown wasn't very dark when we're finished with it, is it? You don't want a big brown cloud in your sky if you can help it. That'll do. Now, I do want a bit of a glare happening. So I'm cleaning that brush and I'm going to have to pick up a bit more white down there, there we go. I'll get a bit more white. Now I'll grab a smaller blending brush. So I'm picking up some more white. And pretty much around here, I want glare, some intense glare, some, some shooting up there, and probably some down the bottom here. Putting it there. I'm gonna grab my smaller blending brush and we'll get this glare intensified there. Blend it away. Easy does it. Up into there. Push it out. And maybe some shooting up here. There we go. How's that looking? That's not bad. I don't mind that. I might get a bit more of this happening there. And I want to feel I can blend some of that a bit more as well. Just getting those glary spots within. And that'll be the rest of our sky completed. I might get a bit here. White, 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 white. Get it on there, get it on there. Yeah. Look at that, a nice big artistic white bit there. And we're just blending away. Right off the canvas. There we go. There, you can go on with that sky until the cows come home, but that'll do it. I don't want to be carrying on too much with this sky. I want to get this painting done. What have we been going for? 17 minutes. And we've got Kevin Bricky. G'day. Is it Kevin? Kevin Bricky, love your work, Ian. Kevin from Adelaide. G'day all the way from Adelaide, Kevin. We've got a, ha a, a man. Sorry if I pronounce your name wrong. Haswina. G'day, Haswina. Uh, we've got Laura Lou. We've got, is that Opa? Or Lopa? I can't tell if that's a K or a 10. And who else we got there? We've got Robert, Robert Diane. If you're well, and um, Anting Gaming. Love watching you create clouds. You make it look achievable. They are achievable. Anything's possible, eh? Trust me. All right. Now we're going to dry that. I'm going to mainly dry the bottom half where I'm going to put the ground here and where I'm going to have that African tree over here somewhere, okay? I'm going to keep it simple but effective and if you want you can even put I don't know some sort of moon cresting across the sky I'll just show you what I mean grab yourself an appropriate pouncer let me see what I've got in the bucket here uh, here's one here good old pouncer so I've got a pouncer here I'll just spray it with some water okay I like my pouncers a little bit damp. And now let's get the paint where we want onto the pouncer. So I'm putting it down there like that, all right? Because I don't want the whole pouncer covered. I only want like a, a quarter moon, half moon, whatever. See how it's loading up into the pouncer there? 
That's all I want. And I've wet the pouncer to get the transfer to happen. Look at your sky. And you don't really want it way up there. I feel, oh, I'm going to have the tree there, so I might just whack it over here. So let's just put it on. Just a tidbit of a movement to, to smear the paint. And bang, you're done. Too easy, wasn't it? Too easy. You can, see I've wet it too much. I don't know if you can see there. That's quite wet there. I'm going to try and blend that. But what it might do is pick up some of the paint from underneath. No, that's no good. I'm going to grab a little bit of, um, I'm going to mask that mistake. Gonna made a bloody mistake now, you bloody idiot. Not to worry, eh? Not to worry. We'll get something just here. Just something. I've gone and dried it, so let's hope I can blend that. We've gone and put some sort of cloud there. Just over that little boo-boo. Is that helping? Yeah, that's all right, that's all right. That'll do, that'll do. I'll do it. Now we want the burnt umber, so I'm going to grab some more burnt umber. Where did I put the burnt umber? There it is. I'm going to grab some more burnt umber now. And we're just going to get this colour on there quite, quite, quite goodingly. So I've dampened that brush a bit. Just so as I can pick this up, because I don't want to muck around. I want to get it on that canvas, eh? Get it right on there. Thank you very much, Tina Locke. Thank you very much. Uh, so our horizon's about here, so we'll go about here, get all this on. Watch this whole video. Do yourself the best favor you can. Watch the whole video. And then if you want to paint this painting, get yourself set up and you know ahead how it's going to look, what you've got to do, what you need to do, what you should and shouldn't do, things like that, all right? Now we've got that pretty much there, like that. I'm going to color it in a bit. There we go. Now I'm going to grab my filberty brush. I'll try and use this if I can, I doubt it, but I'm going to try it because we want distant trees in the background as well. Is this going to work? No, I'd rather do it the way I've had it planned in my mind. In my mind. So we've got our, leave that down there. We've got our filbert brush. My flat filbert. And I want to grab some of that paint with white and really tint it. Get a, oh, white, not that colour, you dag. White. I want to tint that burn umber up. Just get it very pale looking, okay? There we go. Not too pale, but pale enough to give it distance. So we'll get that like that. Now wet your brush. Get it in there so you're going to have a nice transferring happening, okay? Now work out on your painting. Look at your painting here and go, okay, I've got some clouds here. I don't want to destroy too much of that. So I might come over here and get a big chunk over here somewhere and something over here just billowing off the painting coming down like that, okay? So that's where I want to go. So we'll get all this. It's all in the distance. Get these canopies going left and right, up and down, air between the trees and the top of them. All over here. Get some air in between them. So easy to do with these filbert brushes, these flat filbert brushes. I love doing this. So we're trying not to kill that big bright spot there. Now we'll just blank all that in. See, this is why I've dried it down here because it's going to get a bit gluggy and you don't want it to start lifting everything up. We're going to have other stuff in front of this, so that don't worry about the neatness of it yet. You'll see why. That's why I say watch the whole video first because I know what's happening inside my head, but you don't. But once you've watched the whole painting, you all of a sudden do know what's inside my head. That's a good thing about these YouTube tutorials. And see, we've left some 
see-throughy bits there where you can see the sky coming through, okay? We'll get some over here as well, maybe. Just in the background there, little bits here. Use this colour up. Don't have a uniform pattern, just try and make it natural as you can get it. There we go, and we'll go just about there. Now I want to dry this so as um, we get the next colour sticking on top of everything and we don't, we're not trying to paint wet on wet, all right? There we go. I'm just getting all that on there. There we go. So a lot of this is going to be in the background. Let's get that just dried. Thank you very much, Kate Russell. You love the colours, that's good. Just remember those people, the first time you're here, all my paintings are available to buy. My tutorial paintings. There's links in the description below that'll show you what's available, my art group page. There's also a PayPal link. That's how you pay for your paintings through PayPal. All right, we are getting there. We are getting there. This is great. Now we've got that burn umber. Let's grab a bit more. Look how arty and farty and dirty my palette's getting down here. Oh, isn't that great? You're really getting involved with your gear. Get it on. Get it on. I'm a bit excited today because um, a lot of the time when I paint, I just get so excited. And there's nothing better than when you're painting, you're excited. Now we're going to get some, the dark colour of this burnt umber. Down the bottom of the canvas is the raw burnt umber, nothing mixed with it. Now this is slightly tinted. Now we're going to get some darker trees just in front of what we put up there, okay? So let's bring you back up to the palette. Shane Ravel, g'day Shane Ravel. Alrighty, now we've got that colour. Now we want to put some in front of here. Down to the ground. Get some up. And then we'll, we'll bring some of this higher up here. See, now you can see why I painted the background because otherwise this will be mudding up. And work out what you want. Pick a building from behind and what you want in front. Now see there, it's a little bit wet, so I'm gonna dry that a bit more. I'll dry that. It's a good thing about acrylics, you can dry them and move on, especially if you're filming, get things done. Getting some of this over there and maybe something just over here, coming up in front of that there. There we go. Come down here. And we'll bring some of this colour. Let's say all the way, where are we? Get some coming off here. Up in the sky, up in the sky, air between it and come down to the ground. There we go. Too easy. And get some more coming here. Just other canopy jungle treetops, African type looking treetops. Now these are a little bit closer here, so they're not that high. There are a lot of shrubs and stuff there. Just block in the bottom half of it, the heavy half of it. There we go. Now that's a little bit closer. We can, if we want, watch what we do to that. Just grab a little bit of the white here. I've got a little bit of the white. Just pulling it on my brush there. Not too much. Don't destroy it. Not too much. Let's just say, let's just see what we get here. A little bit of 
fundamental bullshit detail within that darker bit, bringing it to the shapes of those canopies that you want. Boom, boom, boom. It's just sort of giving them their slight but lovely detail. Yeah, you can see what that's doing. Come along here. Pushing things in front and behind. A little bit there. There we go. That'll do. Let's not get too carried away. Hey. All right, now I've got to dry that very worldly type. It's sort of in the distance. The man's in his Jeep vehicle because he's afraid the lions will get him, so he's far, far away taking this photo. Whoever took this photo, okay? Now we want to get a little bit of, um, let's say, hang on. We'll get a little bit of um, black there. Where's my black carbon black hole? I just want to put some black onto the palette down here, so bear with me a minute while I do that. And now we're going to grab our tree brush. So what might I be able to use for the tree brush? I'm going to use a flat. Let's hope I don't muck it up. Now we've got just raw burn umber. Get your brush a little bit damp. And just grab the raw burn umber. Nothing else but burn umber, okay? Can you see that? There's that much junk on my palette. I'm surprised you can. Okay. Now we'll get a... The tree's going to start from, let's say, about there within the ground. And we want to try and get one of those... African trees up there, up here. I'm just using this brush there. We'll get something coming out here, there. I'm, I'm using this to deliberately get all hairy sprayed, displayed bits out like that. I'm deliberately doing that. Okay, and then we'll get some main artery coming up here. Maybe something there, going to hold some umbrellary stuff up there like that. And then this one's going to keep going over this way. We've got stuff all displayed there. Pretty easy. And then we'll come from the trunk again. And we'll come out this way. Maybe have a little bit gingering out there. This is just pure burn umber. Something here. Getting it all displayed there just for this African umbrella type tree. I don't know what you call them, but it's looking a bit weird and silly at the moment, but don't worry about that. There we go. Once I thicken it up, you'll see what I mean. There we go. All this fairing out like that, what that's created, it's just saved me time doing lots of squiggly little, you know, trunks, little, little branches everywhere. Now I want to start getting this the thickness that I want here from about there. Not too thick, let's not over exaggerate it. There we go. And colour some of this in now a bit more solid. I need my brush a little bit wetter so as it's going to transfer nicely. And we want some of this nice and solid now. Nice and solid, and if you can, get sharp edges on them. There we go. I might get a bit more out of here actually, just to balance it up. Now let's grab our, um, what do you call it? I want to get this a bit fatter actually, just down here. There we go, not too fat, just down to about there. I want to get my um, filbert brush that I used, and I'm going to use that just to create the tops of this African looking tree. Hopefully it's going to work. So we're just going to grab that burnt umber again, the raw burn umber, nothing else is mixed in it. And we're gonna grab, try and get the canopies of that tree happening. So, let's go for it. Up here, up here, 
a little bit like that. A bit of air in between it. Bits of air in between it. And we're going to try and get the umbrella type of tree going here. On the tops of all that stuff that we put there, on the tops. How's that looking? <sighs> It's all right, it's not the best, but it'll do. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. And we'll get some of this up there. This is those trees that the giraffes stretch their necks up and pig out on. I just want to have a look back in the monitor before I un. Before I straighten my knee out because my knee's bending, I put a bend, I bent my knee backwards. Alright, here we go. Get some more on there. Nice and fine, scratchy little bits, not big thick blobs if you can help it. We'll join that one up with a little trunk just to give it a bit more bullshit effect. Get a little bit within here, not too much. Some of it within there. Get something down here. Now what I want to do is probably grab a bit of the lighter colour down here. Not too much of it though. And those blacker bits at the top, well not the blacker bits, the darker bits. Let's see what we can need it a little bit brighter than that. We want to put a little bit of um there we go, just pushing stuff in front and behind of everything. Just a bit here and there in front of the trunks there. Camera's probably not picking this up but I could see it. Okay, now you want to grab yourself a liner. Where's my liner brush? My good one, not the one that wore away. There we go. Don't know what number it is because there's too much paint on it. Wet the buggery out of it. Get that burn number and twist it. Wet that paint really nicely. This is just going to detail that tree, okay? Really. Give it that finesse. Okay, we've got it there. Now we want to just, just lightly all this sort of stuff. I could probably do this off camera, but I'm showing you now, because my goodness, this is a tutorial. And I don't want to do a painting off camera and say, well, that's what I painted. All the best. So if anything, I'm feeling they kind of come out and support it like that. You know what I mean? Bits under here. And this is going to fill up the tree canopy, make it a bit more busy and realistic and things like that. Just like that. I'll have a look in there. Yeah, it's looking all right. Bits going up here. Get this paint nice and inky type and it'll come off your brush and you twist your brush as you move it along the canvas. And it's just putting nice beautiful bullshit detailing in there. Look at that. Nice, lovely, easy and simple. We can even get some coming up here like that. All the way up to there. If you do a mistake, just go over it and fix it with another brush stroke. There we go. And we'll probably get some of this in there as well, all this little fine twiggy stuff. Because they're really, they're pretty much like that, these type of trees when I've seen them on the TVs and that. 
and I, I feel they're quite a um, artistic looking tree, you know. Now we'll get some just down here as well, just detailing it off the tree there, so it's got more pizzazz. Maybe something around here coming up there. There we go. And we've got lots of nice detail in that tree there. Beautiful. Now, we're not finished yet. We've got the beautiful bit to go. You can keep going with that. You can keep going with that. Looking good. Thank you very much, Laura. Dopey Hopey or Doppy Hoppy. Good morning all from the Netherlands. This is a beautiful sky. Thank you very much. Stephen Mason. G'day, Stephen Mason. How you going, mate? Love your work. Thank you very much. I love your comment. Good morning, everybody. And hi, Ian, says Dave M. Shane Ravel saying hi to everybody. Now, down here, what we got going down here is, um, is that dry? Yeah, I grabbed that black. Where did I put that black? Where did I put it? Oh, I think I just grabbed it. Is that what I've done the tree in? Oh, I think I did. I just want to get some of the black, right? So down here, where are we? In this brush, just some of it. And I kind of want, now this is dry. So I'm just sort of swooping across this way here. I just want some darker elements and scrumble it into all that brown there, okay? Just like that. But try and keep it so it's flat looking. What I mean by flat looking is that your ground's moving towards the horizon line. Bit there, we can put a bit over here. This is just gap filling stuff, because I'm gonna put a lot of, you know, sun setting dusk, and there's a lot of dust in the ground. I'm gonna do a lot of that. So scrumble this now, just scrumble it. We've got dark depth there, beautiful, fantastic. That'll do. Now we've got to dry that, make sure it's very, very dry. And we're going to make some beautiful, simple and effective dust. Acacia tree, I believe. There you go, there, acacia tree, says uh, Dave. I'm not sure, I'm not much of an arbitress, but um, I only know the names of trees that I know. The ones that I don't know, I don't know what they're called. Um, so yeah. Now, I've achieved half of what I was going for. I'm just show you what. I've got all this sunset down here, some sky happening here, but all up here, it's sort of turned into, I'm not 100% happy with that, but it's okay. It's not the end of the world. All right, now I'm gonna grab my little flat scrumbling blending brush. He was a flat. It did start out life as something like that, but now it's slowly been bashed and beaten and it's fanned out like that. So now we're just going to grab, let me put all these brushes in the water so they don't get in my way. Uh, we want some titanium white, come down here. Uh, Robert from France, g'day Robert, Di oh, Robert Dana, Robert Dana. <sighs> Beautiful colours, I love your sky, thanks very much Rob. Now, you got this brush, you've put some titanium white out of the tube, a good, not a flow white, and you want to build your brush up with some paint, all right? Get the ends so there's no goobly gloops on the edge there, all right? And you don't need much of this at all, not at all. Everything's reasonably dry, yep. Now I'm going to just get that on there and wipe it off a bit. And I want dust now coming from here sweeping across the painting as well. So I want to get sweeping it around. See how I'm getting white, big heavy bits? You don't want white heavy bits, you want this. Let's go again, you want this just looking like dust. And if it's too white, we can mix it up, which I think I will. So come down here, that's too white. Where did our burn number go here? We'll get a bit of that in there. There we go, just that very, see that color there? That's what we want, not white. White's too stark. We don't want to start painting. Wipe that on the edge of your board there and we'll go again. Yeah, that's better. And we're gonna make some smoke 
still too much on my brush. You want brighter values and duller values of this that are dull and it's going to be like just mist and smoke and dust all along the bottom there. See, if anything, my brush is still too much paint. Coming across here, we're pretty much hiding where those two colours meet with all this smoke. You know, the whims, the whim. The wind has swept across the African floor here, throwing up dust everywhere. Not happy with that bit there, it looks ridiculous, but too bad. We're hiding all that there with all this, what do you call it? Mist, smoke, dust, something like that, you know? go all over the place. See it's very dry blending this and it's just leaving a trail of all that dust there. And then what we can do is highlight some of this with the pure white. Over here we buggered it up a bit didn't we? That can be fixed believe it or not. How's it looking? Oh golly it doesn't look the best do you? There we go. Now I'll just grab a little bit of white on the brush and maybe put bits in front and behind everywhere, maybe, or maybe not. Let's see. Well, you can work out whether you want to do this or not. Now that bit there that I said um, you can fix up, I really don't like it, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Grab that colour that we had for the trees there and then just put it all back. And paint all that back. Okay, paint all that back. That's it, paint it back. There we go. And dry it. You need to draw it pretty well because that little scrumbling brush, you're, you're pushing on there with a little bit of force to get the paint smearing off onto the canvas. That'll do. Now we'll just grab that again, get bugger all in the brush, come back over there and retouch that up nice and softer. There we go. Getting some down here forward as well if you want. Okay. Grabbing the the darker burnt umber. I've probably got a little bit of black mixed with it because I just want something in front there sitting at back just like that. Little bits here and there. Can you see that? There you go, I'll just put that. These are gonna stay dark as well. Maybe something within there, just breaking up that dust a bit. Just some sort of shrubbery on the ground there. Doesn't matter what it is, it's just some kind of um, subject matter within the painting. And it's just setting things backwards and forwards. Maybe a little darker patch within there somewhere. So you know how you sit clouds down in the sky sometimes? Well, this is probably just sitting that dust down as well. Bits of shrubbery, sort of silhouette, because the sun's on the other side of it, so this, you won't see this side of it in light, okay? There we go, bits of there. That'll do. Let me grab my little, uh, where are you? Here we go, my little liner brush. I'll wet some paint. Let's grab this white here. Eh? Get it 
very, very wet. That's a lighter value of the actual ground colour. Normally where I put an autograph, the area that I'm putting the autograph on, whatever colour it is, I'm normally doing it in a highlighted value of that colour. So I'll just sign it here. And make sure you check out the links in the description below and support my content if you like to buy some of my art. All the links are there to show you what's available, how to pay for them through PayPal. Join my art group network on Facebook, my art group. And we'll put my little cat Steve's autograph in here, his little paw print I mean. There we go. And we'll also, we'll whack a frame on this just to see how how it's going to look in the frame. This should look all right in a frame, okay? Leave it on. There you go. That's not too shabby in a frame, eh? We've got the African ground. It's all dust and afternoon. We've got that tree there, the acacia tree. Someone says, I'm not sure if it is or not, but hopefully it is. And we've got our sun setting African sky, okay? You could probably put a silhouette of an elephant or something there. But just remember, you can do that, okay? I'll just get you back here. Ah, where are we? There we go. What have we got? Um, is there many people there? 43. Giorgio. G'day, Giorgio. All the way from Italy. Laura Lou looks very pretty. Thank you, Ian. Going back to sleep now. You have a good sleep, okay? Dave. Thanks for joining, Dave. And Robert and Kate. Kate Peterson. Love this one. The sky is fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching this live tutorial. If you're watching the replay, leave me a comment in the description below and check out the links in the description below. And also don't be shy to share, like, and subscribe, okay? And just remember, if you like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, but if you don't, no, I said that wrong. See, this is live, I don't get to edit it. <laughs> just remember, take two. Okay, and just remember, if you like what I'm doing, you tell your friends. But if you don't, tell everybody, all right? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on you. Whew. Okay, oh, and the colours will be in the description below. I'll put all the colours there. I better take that frame off so I won't get dirty there. <clears throat> and that can be photographed with inside. I'll just pull that off anyway, there's no point leaving it on there because I've got to take it inside and take a photo of it. And then I can turn my camera off. I can probably, if you are still there, whoever's still there, just show you. Now this will be, once it gets sold, it will be glued to a canvas panel, a lightweight canvas board, but that's not too bad. And that's proper quality artist canvas cloth. All right, I'll just go behind the camera here and say it's Uru from The Guru.